time I look into your eyes, I feel your love and passion with each touch of your hand. Oh, yeah. You're my world, girl, the apple of my eyes. And on this special day, please hear me say, oh, oh, every day with you is a Valentine. Let's celebrate this love with a glass of wine. Oh, oh. And have I told you, girl, that you look so fine, fine? Cause every day with you. The second reason why you should not invest in a relationship that can work is because sometimes those relationships have even become marriages and still did not work. It's to avoid the heartbreak. Some people have entered into some things that looked like they were going to work. They even got married, and yet, even in the marriage, it broke down. Praise God. So all this is to avoid the waste of time and avoid the heartbreak. In my little investigations, because if you have observed, um, divorce rates is increasing. The sad thing is that it's even increasing amongst Christians, which is, which is totally you know, inexplainable. There's, we don't, it doesn't even make sense that divorce rate is also growing even amongst born-again Christians. Now, that is not even where it stops. If it stops there, we will manage it. But right now, it is even growing amongst pastors and among ministers of the gospel. Praise the Lord. It's becoming a common thing for a, for a, a minister to divorce his wife. And every time I hear a divorce story, or a broken relationship or a broken marriage, because I'm generally interested in relationships, I try to investigate. I try to say, why? Why did it not work? And these are some of my findings over the years. Because I've discovered even some of these things here. Even, even if the relationship is 10 years or 20 years or 30 years down the line, some of these things still can make them break. Let's read Psalm 11. Psalm 11 verse 3. So every time I hear of a divorced marriage, a broken relationship, stuff like that, I like to investigate. I like to ask why. Why did it not work? Especially for those ones that seem to have lasted. Especially those ones that have even made it to marriage. I'm very interested. When I say relationship that made it into marriage and yet did not last, I'm always curious. Now why? Why? Did it not make it? After 10 years of marriage, the marriage still broke. Why did it not make it? I'm always curious to know. Psalm 11, are we there? I can't hear you. Are you in Psalm 11? Did you come with the Bible? Some people didn't come with the Bible, though. Psalm 11, verse 3. I want us to read it together. After the count of two, one, two, read. One more time. For the last time, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? In other words, once the foundation is faulty, there is nothing we can do. Praise God. Once the foundation is faulty, there is nothing we can do. So most times in my little investigations, most of these marriages or relationships that don't work, is usually because of foundational problems. In fact, based on my investigation, 100% of the time, it is foundational issues. Okay, let me say 99%. Let's just give you 1% ex ex exemption. Most of the time, many of the issues are foundational issues. What does that mean? That means there were issues that were existing even before the marriage or the relationship started. They were things that were not handled even before the marriage or relationship even started. They were foundational issues. Praise the Lord. They were foundational issues. There is nothing that has caused the divorce today that wasn't existing even before the marriage started. But somebody chose to ignore it at that time. 
one of the parties or both of the parties chose to ignore the problem even when the thing had not started. They thought they can manage. They thought they could cope. They thought it wouldn't be that serious. And it ended up becoming something really serious that had to break the relationship. Praise the Lord. So we're going to look into a few of those things that can affect a relationship and not allow it to work. We're going to look at it. I have a few here. I'll stop anywhere, you know, I can get to. Even if I don't finish it today. Praise the Lord. The first one. A relationship that won't work is when it is between two people or when one of the parties is too young and immature. When one of the parties is too young. Relationships are great. They are fun. But there is a timing for a relationship. There is a time when you are in a state of mind and in a frame of mind to be able to make a proper decision in relationships. When you rush into a relationship when you are too young, your priorities at that time are not very developed. Your sense of value is, is not, very, not very mature, it's not developed. Most from our little interviews and investigations, most young people that are not probably paying bills, what determines an attractive guy, for instance, to a young girl, is how handsome the guy looks. How tall is he? Is he fine? Maybe, does he have a talent? Can he sing? Can he act? Those are the things that will interest a young girl. But you see, if the girl is 29, the game has changed. She's not looking for just a fine boy. Can he pay bills? Is he responsible? Does he have a job? But you see, if both of us are in school, you see, he doesn't need to have a job. He should just be a fine boy. But when we are out of school, is he a loafer or is he working? Does he have something to do? Is he responsible? So if you choose when you are too young, you will, you will, you will end up choosing the wrong things. The things that teenage people discuss are different from what mature people discuss. It's just a phase of life that you should not be making permanent decisions. Maybe the only decision you should be making at that stage is concerning your life's purpose. What you need to do with your life. What God is saying concerning your life. That's not the time of your life where you ought to be choosing a life partner because your priorities are not right. I always crack a joke or give an illustration that marriage is like choosing one channel. Unless imagine on, on, on like DSTV or whatever, you know, there are many channels. They say it's only one that you watch for the rest of your life. If you choose that channel when you are under 10, you most likely choose what? Cartoon Network or CBBs and all those things. That's what you will choose. And it, I mean, you to see my daughter watching CBBs. Very serious concentration. Very, that's the most important thing in the world at that time. She will put that her small chair. She will say CBBs. She knows how to say, say CBBs. That's one of the first words she learned. CBBs. So she'll put it on and she'll be watching it. She knows that. Uh, who are those guys? Um, Teletubbies. Lala. What's it? What are those people? She knows all those people. I don't even know them. Very serious, so concentrating. So left to you, that's a very important thing. At that time of her life. But you see, if she chooses that, by the time she turns to a teenager, she will no longer be interested in Cartoon Network. If she's a teenager, what channel is she most likely to choose? I can't hear you. No, somebody should say. E channel. Or what? MTV base, Abby. Or channel O. For people scoring O. <laughs> Do you understand? It's just natural. That is what is interesting to you. I remember when we were teenagers. I mean, that's all we talk about. Who released a new album? Who is singing what? Who won this award? What is this person wearing? I mean, we're so consumed by those things. I mean, when we were young, it was rap that it was raining. So I know it might not be rap for young people now, but when we were young, it was rap. So we're choosing whether you are East Coast or West Coast. We are not even in any coast, though, but we involve ourselves. We do, they do East Coast, Tupac, you keep Tupac. We, we don't join coast, we're not even there in the coast. <laughs> but we're choosing whether we're West Coast or East Coast. Just like that. that was, we're so consumed by those things. But you see, if you choose at that stage, by the time you start becoming 20, um, um, above, let's say, 25 and upwards, you are beginning to have more direction in your life. 
at that time you are choosing something more relevant to your everyday life. It might be different for everybody. It depends on what your, you know, your interest is. But you see, at that time you are making a more mature decision. Praise the Lord. So that's how it works. That's how it works. If you choose too early, you are likely to choose wrong. Make sure you are not too young. Make sure you are mature and ready to make such a strong decision. Praise the Lord. Statistics have shown that people that marry or enter relationships early, you know, they usually don't last. That the older you are, when you start a relationship, the better the decision. All right? That's statistics. All right? That the older you are, when you make that decision, the better that decision is. From my experience, when I've spoken to people that made that decision too early, by the time they are five years, seven years down the line, they are thinking, I've not made, I, I didn't make the right decision. Because their outlook on life has changed. The important things in their life have changed. And they discovered they married for where they were. They didn't marry for where they were going. So they discovered that this person I hinged with or I hooked up with doesn't fit into the life I desire. So the older you are when you make the decision, the more likely it will to, to be to succeed. The more likely to be to succeed. Praise the Lord. The younger the relationship, the less likely you are, you are to have made the right decision. So one of the things that can break relationships is when you are too young or too immature. The second point, relationships that won't work. When one or both of the parties are not grounded in the word of God. When they are not grounded in godly principles. They might be born again, but if they are not grounded in godly principles, if they are not grounded in the things of God, that relationship is an endangered relationship. It's under a lot of threats of failure. Praise the Lord. Now, let me explain this. This is very important. Because many people will say, but, 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 but he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's an apostle, he's a pastor, he's a prophet, he's a, he's a worker in church. Being a worker or serving God in any capacity is not linked to being grounded in the word of God. They are different things. Because many people marry people that have position, spiritually speaking, but they are not spiritually mature. If they are not grounded in the word of God, they don't have the capacity to understand what marriage is. Because marriage is spiritual. Marriage came from God. All the terms and demands of marriage are spiritually, you know, carried out. Somebody that is not grounded spiritually will not be able to deliver. Will not have the capacity to even understand. Praise the Lord. I want to specially invite you to any of our four services on Sundays. On the mainland church, our first service starts for 7 a.m. The second service is 8.30 a.m. And the third service is 10 a.m. The address is Fagbem's bus stop behind the Nepa office at Mordorfi, Lagos. Then if you live on the island, we have our island service that starts for 11 a.m. every Sunday at the Civic Center, Ozumbambadiwe, Victoria Island, Lagos. I look forward to personally ministering to you and welcoming you to those services. God bless you.